What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Flex Podcast. For everyone clocking those late night DFS hours, this is our night shift episode for NFL week number eight. We will break down the Sunday night football DFS slate, the Monday night football DFS slate. Uh, I'm your host, Chris Raybon of the Action Network, and here to join me, one of the most accurate fantasy football rankers, projectors in the game, the odds maker, Sean Kerner. Sean, what's going on? What's up? Uh, I, I've hit on my last two Sunday Night Football dart throws with uh, Use Check and Woo. Kenny Gainwell. Let's see if we can make it uh, 3-0. How, how are you doing? I, I'm doing well, man. I'm uh, I'm excited to go to the, uh, the game later, which Hell is yeah. the NBA game. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to be... I think I'm going to actually have a, a bet on this Monday night game, which is rare for me. So <laughs> the, the Raiders game? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Raiders-Lions? Nice. Yep. Um, but yeah, we'll get into that, but let's, uh, we'll start with the Sunday night game. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out our player projections episode over on the action network podcast, uh, channel and our fantasy preview of the main slate out right now on this channel. And if you haven't joined the action network discord server, be sure to jump in there and you can ask us your fantasy DFS betting questions. Sean's been in there giving advice and helping people out. We might jump in there during these uh, night games. So be sure to check for the Discord link in the episode description. All right, Sunday Night Football, Bears at the Chargers. Chargers favored by too much, eight and a half. (laughs) Oh, really? I I think so. Um, (laughs) 46 and a half is the total, 820 PM Eastern on NBC luck rankings. Chicago is 31st. So they've been very unlucky and the chargers are middle of the pack, but the total is minus 7.8, which means, uh, you know, these two teams have combined to, to score 7.8 points over expected. And most of that is the chargers. Correct. Uh, I, I guess so. Yeah. It looks like it's, uh, seven point seven of those points is the Chargers, yeah. and point one is <laughs> responsible for the Bears. Um, I'll have to look into it. I'm guessing maybe the Chargers' uh, red zone touchdown percentage is uh, pretty high, and defensively might be low. But uh, yeah, that I, I I actually I mean I want to hear your opinion on. It sounds like you have a take on the spread, but I, I did like the under on this game before even seeing the luck rankings were on it. Um, you know, I think the Chargers should win, maybe not by more than eight and a half. Um, but, you know, the, the Bears, they just had everything go their way uh, to put up 30 plus against the Raiders. So I think, you know, it'll be a lower scheme, game, scoring game on their end, uh, which, you know, could force the Chargers to be a bit more run heavy. So I had my eye on this under before even seeing this. Yeah, I, I would definitely go under or nothing here. I would not go the over. Uh, I would go right. Bears in the under. I think the I think the number, I think the spread is too high. I don't think the Chargers are very good right now. Um, they cannot, they cannot block for Justin Herbert. You know, their offensive line is, is banged up. You have no Lindsley, you know, guys just aren't playing well. You know, Herbert's not really able to progress through his reads. And then, you know, without Williams, you're re- it's really down to, you know, Keenan Allen and sometimes Joshua Palmer getting open and, you know, the Bears defense one of the top defenses in the NFL in the month of October. So, uh, you know, that kind of lends credence to that under, but also I just, I don't think this is a smash spot for the chargers the way, you know, I think the line is kind of set up. A lot of people are talking about chargers and survivor chargers and a tease Mm. piece. I think the chargers could easily lose this game. I mean, if you haven't seen the chargers play, like they're just not good. They're just very, very average, I, I think. And um, it's just just not a good look right now. So uh, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, but let's get right into the DFS plays. Who do you like in the captain spot to have a free performance? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with um, DJ Moore here, um, mainly because he has shown you know decent chemistry with Bajent, Tyson Bajent. Um, you know he had eight catches for 54 yards last week in their blowout win. So you know could see even more passing volume here since it. I guess it should be a trailing game script could be a bit more pass heavy. Plus Bajan's not going to, yeah, exactly. Bajan's not going to scramble as much as fields, although he did have some decent rushing stats last week. Um, 
But yeah, the less scrambles Bajan has, it's going to lead to more pass attempts, which should only help more. And like I mentioned, you know, Cole Komet, um, arguably like the number two target in this offense, has yet to see a target from Bajan on 39 dropbacks. So clearly, you know, DJ Moore is Bajan's guy. Um, so I like the idea of using Moore's captain here. His roster shot might be a bit lower here, you know, with no fields. Um, but I, I think he still offers the same upside, even with Bajan under center. Yeah, I like uh, more in this spot. I think he will be on the field pretty much every play. He's playing well in the run game as well. Block, I think he's having the best run blocking season of his mm. career. So he's not coming off the field and he's going to catch balls. He's the number one separator on this team as well. So uh, like more, uh, I'm going to go with Keenan Allen here and – there are a few reasons. Number one, I don't think the Chargers are just going to be weeding wire to wire. I mean, they never do. Uh, yeah. I think only four of their last 24 games have come down to, you know, uh, more than one possession. So, Jeez. yeah, the Chargers are probably going to play a close game. And I think the Bears are a little bit underrated here. But Keenan Allen, this season alone, has drafting scores of 48, 34, and 21. Uh, in three of his six games. So the ceiling is massive and he has at least one target inside the 10 yard line in the five of six games this year. He is third in the NFL and targets inside the 10 with seven. And then Chicago's a pretty zone heavy defense and Allen averages 2.9 yards per route against zone coverage that leads the team 10th among all wide receivers in the NFL. And we know Allen is a primary is the Chargers primary slot receiver. That's where he's going to line up about two thirds of the time. And that is going to allow him to avoid Jalen Johnson for the most part. Johnson has been playing really well. He's the number one graded coverage corner at PFF, allowing a 44% catch rate under five yards of target and a passer rating of 22.2, which is worse than if you just spike the ball into the ground. So you definitely, you know, these perimeter guys on the Chargers is going to be a little little shaky here but Allen I think is going to be their top means of offense you know especially with the line struggling not really opening any holes for Austin Eckler uh, either so uh, like me some Keenan Allen here in the spot can never go wrong with Keenan Allen in the captain slot or when you're arguing with Matthew Friedman Allen <laughs> AJ Green well, AJ Green who's been out of the <laughs> league now for three years it's wild, though, because I'm thinking about it. A.J. Green and Julio Jones came in the same year, right? I think it was 2011. Oh, and really? Julio Jones is still out here, you know, signing to practice squads and searching searching for a ring. And it seems like A.J. Green's been long gone. Like, I have an A.J. Green Bengals jersey, and it's a, it's a throwback now. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't say, like, Julio Jones is balling it up. But at least he's out there, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's still... The fact that, you know, I mean, A.J. Green was bad that last, you know, we were the last few yeah. years, where it's like Julio's still getting contracts. So, right. hey, more power to him. Uh, who do you like for value? Um, I'm going with Josh Palmer here. Uh, he, I will mention he did pop up on the injury report with a knee injury. So, yeah, we'll want to make sure he's okay uh, before we actually play him. But assuming he's good to go, uh, he has been on fire. You know, he's coming off a five catch. 133 yard game. Um, you know, ever since Mike Williams has gone down, he's really been the number two target in this offense. You know, he's averaged a 99% routes run rate, 20% target rate, those three games. Um, you know, plus they've been limiting Eckler in the passing game. Quentin Johnson has yet to really step up. Gerald Everett's all banged up. Um, so it's just leading to more targets for obviously Keenan Allen, but also Josh Palmer. Um, so just considering he's just the clear number two pass catch right now, got to go with him. Yeah. Uh, the only th I, I am a little worried about, you know, how much you, uh, Jalen Johnson lines up on him, but, uh, I don't think Johnson will shadow or, or anything like that. So they should be able to just like stick, uh, QJ on him and just waste him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Cause I, I think this in general, I do think the bears defense is, is, coming together they're starting mm -hmm. to blitz a little more so you know I, I know it's like considered like the one of the worst defenses but i actually think they're more like 20th range like i don't think they're like dead last so uh that'll be right. interesting but yeah palmer is you know one of the only other guys besides allen that's really stepped up for this for this offense and 
uh, Gerald Everett looks like he's going to miss this game and, and miss some time. So they're going to need him even more. Uh, okay, for value, I the first guy I love is Deontay Foreman. And I think, I'm, I don't know where people are on him, actually, because <laughs> I think, you know, he had the massive game. And I think people are kind of saying, okay, well, now you're going to get uh, Johnson back. And he also split carries with Darrington Evans. So maybe people aren't too high on him, but I love Foreman this week. I think Foreman, uh, even with Johnson back, will lead the backfield. Uh, I think he, you know, and we saw this with the Panthers last year where when you put Foreman on the field, it's hard to take him off. He just starts yeah. balling out. So he's averaging 3.4 yards after contact per rush. That's 10th out of uh, 50 qualified running backs with 25 or more carries. That is almost double Roshan Johnson's 1.9, which ranks dead last of 50 mm-hmm. qualified backs. And then, you know, as far as Evans, Yes, they had almost equal carries. I think it was 16-14 Foreman. But when the game was competitive last week, Foreman outcarried Evans 14-7. to So about the normal you know, starting running back uh, share that you would expect. And Evans averaged 3.4 yards a carry, while Foreman averaged 5.6. And that's, again, because Foreman's forcing more missed tackles, uh, getting more yards after contact. And the Chargers, they're 23rd in run defense DVOA, 31st in DVOA, uh, on passes to backs and they're giving up the most receiving yards per game to backs. And I think that's a little more important with a quarterback like Bajan, who is not going to really push the ball down the field or take a lot of chances. I think he's going to dump the ball off mm-hmm. to Foreman a lot. And we don't think of him as a receiver, but on 12 routes with Bajan last week, four targets, three catches, 31 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he has a career high 20% target rate this year. It's uh eight percent higher than his career average which is around 12 so i i think deontay foreman is going to run it back and have another great game and i think this is going to be the start of a similar situation to what we saw last year where he just kind of takes control mm-hmm. of his backfield even if khalil herbert comes back uh, i'm gonna call it now i think deontay foreman uh remains the starter for the bears for the rest of the season so love me some foreman and uh Mooney as well. Uh, I think Mooney's interesting here. You know, after DJ Moore, it's tough, but I I think, you know, Mooney over the middle underneath this Charger defense, dead last in DVOA on passes to the short middle. And you're going to see Jasir Taylor a lot uh, in the slot. He's got a 45 PFF coverage grade, which is 104th out of 117 qualifiers. So definitely one of the weak links in that Charger secondary and, uh Mooney has a 92% route rate in the last two games, 89% the last four. So I think he should be able to to catch some easy ones underneath. And Taylor, you know, in that slot has given up 47 or more receiving yards in four or six games. Staley talked about, you know, potentially playing more man coverage uh this week. So I think you are gonna see this matchup. And, and I think Mooney uh, is gonna pop for you know four or five catches uh in this spot so like love foreman and and like me as well yeah i think foreman's a great play because um especially for the one game slate just you you can't assume that the chargers are going to blow them out so there could be a game script where the bears are actually leading uh, and foreman has a massive game the one thing i would be concerned about i mentioned on our other pod is just his receiving usage but like you said bajan's more likely to check down than justin field so even if he gets like a hit his routes run rate he could still end up catching a few balls um so yeah yeah i could definitely get behind this and i agree with you i'm i'm like the biggest kill herbert fan uh, i think <laughs> roshan johnson's like a really underrated rookie but there is no reason for like foreman to take a backseat to either of these guys right now like as long as he's playing like this he's going to be the Bears' starting running back yeah we've and we've seen this like again last year and you know he can be part of a committee but if you need him to carry 20 25 times in a game and and really carry the low he could do that too so uh yeah like him this week uh who do you like for dart throws well let's try to make this three in a row where my dart throw scores a touchdown so i'm going donald parham um it does look like you mentioned it does look like gerald everett could miss this game uh, I would obviously love Parham there, but his roster ship will obviously spike. Uh, even if Everett suits up, like I'm going with Donald Parham here. 
um, you know, he, he should see a boost in playing time either way. Uh, it was kind of weird that it was Stone Smart who actually saw the biggest increase in playing time last week. Um, but, you know, he, he doesn't really command targets. I, I don't know if that's something that's sticky. I think Parham would take over most of Gerald Everett's snaps if he were to be out. Uh, plus, Donald Parham is just constantly one of Justin Herbert's sneaky favorite uh, red zone targets. So he's always a threat, you know, for a vulture touchdown. So especially in this game where Everett could be banged up or miss, uh, you know, the chances of Parham scoring a touchdown go way up here. Yeah, I you know, Parham is, uh, that's like his specialty. He's a part of their red zone package. And I think that's why sometimes his snap rates from game to game fluctuate a little bit because um, there's certain packages with him. And maybe that's why Smart played uh, mm. behind Everett last game because uh, maybe, you know, Parham wasn't really uh, practicing as, you know, prepared to take over yeah. that role or whatever. But yeah, if that, like, Everett hasn't practiced this week and from everything I'm hearing, it sounds like he's going to miss. So I, I would think they'll, they'll get Parham up to speed here and allow him to play that tight end one role. They'll have Trey McKitty active in that mm-hmm. in that case, which they didn't last week as well, which is another reason why uh, you might have seen Smart uh, play a little more than we thought. But, I mean, Smart is an interesting dart throw as well if, mm-hmm. if Everett misses because, like you said, everyone will be on uh, Parham in that yeah. situation. But uh, I got a couple from the Bears because, again, I think, you know, you have this big spread, everyone kind of – kind of just assumes that the Chargers are going to get right game. And, and it well could be, but this is the NFL. Uh, things don't usually go that easy. <laughs> so uh, I think, oh, you know, rostering some of these Chicago Bears and going a little heavier than the uh, field is uh, a way to get an edge in this spot. So I like Tyler Scott as a dart throw. He ran a season high 69% route rate last week, 65% in the last two games. Remember, Claypool is no longer here. So this is your new wide receiver at three, the rookie Scott. Second on the Bears in targets and air yard share at 29% over the last two games. So uh, not, again, not expecting a ton of air yards from Bajan, but um, still good to see that Scott uh, is, uh, is involved. And he's also got multiple carries twice in the last four games. So four carries in the last four games. Uh, but those came in two games with two apiece. So um, they're definitely going to look to get him some touches, I think. And then uh, another one, and this is a true dart throw because it looks like Roshan is going to be back, but I think it's possible even that Darrington Evans remains the running back two over Johnson. Because remember, you know, early in the year, you know, Johnson was third on the depth chart and, you know, okay, he, he, he moved up, but if you look at Evans usage, he played more than Johnson ever has once he was the RB2. 14 and 9 carries. Johnson's high was 8. And then a 33% route rate with a high of 41. Johnson averaged a 27% route rate with a high of 36. So um Evans is another guy who you know may continue to get playing time even with uh Johnson back in the fold. Johnson may just return to that. Um, you know, RB3 role that he started the first couple of games in. And, you know, if Evans is the RB2, you know, probably going to get some work. Whoever is the RB2 should get, you know, mm-hmm. six to eight touches in this game. So I think it's worth taking a dart throw on Evans because I'm sure if Johnson returns, you know, there's people that think he might be a starter, which is certainly possible. But mm-hmm. uh, just kind of looking at the numbers, looking at their yards after contact, looking at the usage and reading between the lines. It seems like it, it very w- uh, well may be Foreman, Evans, Johnson, third in the pecking order. So I think Evans will be the guy that's not really going to get much roster ship uh, in that case. So love him as a, you know, kind of true dart throw here. And you could, if the, you know, if there's a blowout either way, if the Chargers blow out the Bears or the Bears mm. blow out the Chargers, you're going to see, I think, the backup running back in the game. So uh, like Scott, like Evans as well. Yeah, Evans might be the slight favorite to lead the backfield in routes run. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was inter- like, uh, Travis Homer returned. I thought there was a chance he would eat into Evans' work. That didn't happen at all. Uh, I'm guessing if Roshan's back, that Homer might be just inactive. Uh, now, I think yeah. he, he's a he's a special teamer. So oh, okay. I'm pretty sure he would never act. It would, well, they might have. It might actually be Johnson to be inactive or Evans, one of those two guys. Oh well, yeah. I, well, yeah. if Evans is inactive, I think that'll be clear not to play him. 
Right. Uh, but either way, like Homer's return did not impact Evans' play uh, usage whatsoever. So that was just good to see for Evans. Um, but yeah, like love taking Evans here. I, I wouldn't take Evans and Foreman in the same lineup, but you can have one for different types of game scripts. But yeah, love investing in the Bears' backfield here. Oh, and I mean, so it. Oh, sorry. What was that? Oh, I was gonna say I actually would take Evans and Foreman oh. in the same because this Charger defense has been terrible on the ground and through the air against running backs. And, you know, we saw it last week where 16 carries for Foreman, 14 for Evans. That's 30 combined carries before even factoring in catches. So I I, I do think actually it's viable to take two Bears running backs, as crazy as it sounds. Well, yeah, it's crazy. That's why it might work. I just think (laughs) with Roshan, it will make it tougher for both to hit. But, um, yeah, yeah, I take your point. If if you were going to make 150 lineups, how many of them would have – Kerry Blasson game. I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, out of 150, probably like two or three. Not, yeah, I, okay. It, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, I think we'd have to have a situation similar to what happened <laughs> on that Thursday game where everybody yeah. went, which is, you know, not the, I mean, we saw it happen once, but even <laughs> right. when he got in, he didn't really do anything. He's not really right. a guy that's um, uh, experience carrying a football like that or, or doing anything with it with the rocks so yeah maybe two or three yeah not many good you? fullbacks this year uh it'd be like one yeah yeah it's... yeah because like if four running backs are active all four would somehow have to get knocked out of the game to have that right situation. right yeah exactly yeah because you would yeah homer would probably be active um <laughs> we're he he parlayed at eight carries for 26 yards so even in that situation not much ceiling yeah, I think I would rather if I'm going with like a big, a big boy mm-hmm. on the Bears, I would probably go Mercedes Lewis because I think he is going to get some snaps for his run blocking, and mm-hmm. you know he could always slip out if you're in the red zone, slip yeah. out for an easy play action touchdown or something like that. I think he drew even with Tunyon in terms of snaps last week. Did Lewis? So another guy to keep uh, keep. An yeah, eye I on. wonder if some of those were at the end when it was a when they had the backups in um but yeah i noticed that too i mean he's more of a he's more of like a a, kind of like another red zone guy but they had you know people most of the guys played like they were kind of just rotating guys like even foreman and evans like evan like evans got seven of the last 10 carries but it wasn't like foreman completely left and then evans got the last seven carries it was kind of back and forth so um yeah i think i think lewis will get a couple snaps uh Mm -hmm. here and there so uh, another guy to to, to consider. 